how do we get employees to be engaged nine pillars of increasing productivity recognition is one of those nine pillars there if i had the option today to recognize each one of my employees individually at a, like a very personal level nothing better than that okay but i can't so what's the next best solution we came up with this framework called the air framework so it's about appreciation incentivization reinforcement with an emotional connect hi everyone uh, thank you for uh, joining me here and i think uh, smriti's talk just before me is the perfect segue uh, for me to talk about uh, the topic which i have been thinking about for quite some time you know uh, enhancing the whole experience through the recognition and awareness tools and frameworks okay let me see how this works all right okay uh so many uh no, so let's get into the buzzword which is happening right now quite quitting but if you think about it what's it you know it's just disengaged employees now how do we get employees to be engaged so they need the motivation right and what creates the kind of motivation it's you know doing meaningful work uh getting heard getting seen getting impactful recognition now this seems to be very straightforward right i mean let's just do this thing uh i am not here to talk about how to do this this is a, a a very big discussion around how to create this and every company has their own context in how they have to work around these kind of motivation factors but the important thing is it's not just about this there are some basic factors also okay how do you create the tools uh, or your policies which are in tune with the times sorry how do we go back okay all right uh so so the the policies has to be in tune with the times getting the tools which make the life at work easier and this is very important part of it and of course the hygiene factors like your salary is the security in office all those kinds of things are also important now this is a whole huge area okay and and it's not my expertise to talk, talk about all these things i want to specifically talk about the tools and the frameworks which make life easier and specifically around the recognition and the wellness space so uh okay but what what makes us capable to talk about this we have been in this space for about 12 years now we have a rewards and recognition uh, platform we have a pulse tool a wellness tool all these things have been built into our system uh and uh, we have quite a, a good number of clients and we have won various awards across the globe this time the latest one on the g2 reviews which many of you would be aware of uh, uh, we have been ranked the number 1 across segments across the world as a number 1 recognition and the engagement platform so we have spoken to various kinds of clients right from 100 people companies to 300000 people companies right from a junior hr manager to the chros and we have got some insight so it's given us a bird's eye view on some of the requirements which are there some of the challenges which they are facing and that hopefully gives us something which i can share with you today you know and getting back to the topic recognition i said like we'll talk about the tools and frameworks around recognition and wellness so recognition the first part of this now this is a gartner uh uh report which came out just uh, two different reports 21 and 22 so one says basically engagement increases by 8 percentage points if you have the right recognition the second uh, uh, the image which i'm putting up there it basically says that the nine pillars of increasing productivity recognition is one of those nine pillars there continuing on that there's another survey from uh, or a report from mckinsey which talks about uh, recognition increasing engagement by 55% but the gallup poll says that only one in three employees feel recognized there now that's the recognition paradox everyone knows that recognition is important and i am sure every company 
in the world has some recognition programs. Whether it's the salesman of the week, uh, the employee of the year, the annual uh, functions which you do for the star performers, everyone does recognition. You don't need any data to say that recognition works or doesn't work. Who doesn't like recognition? Right? I'm sure, I, I mean, I can't find anyone who doesn't like that. And it's also the research which has happened around recognition outside of work primarily where we have seen that it, it's a huge motivational factor for people. I mean, think about the army, right? I mean, their pays are not like the IT guys pay, right? But they feel proud because of the recognition, all those badges and, and insignias which they put up. There's a reason for that. That's the recognition which they have got. So it's important. HR knows about it. Everyone is doing something about it. Okay, But it's under leveraged. I would say it's one of the low hanging fruits. It's still under leveraged. And, and the investment which has happened in this space from the, from the corporate side is suboptimal. And there are, of course, various reasons for this. You know, uh, the objectives are not clear. Uh, the measurement, how to tweak it, okay, how to make changes to it, that's not clear. What to measure basically is not clear. The line managers, maybe the HR head or the top senior HR bosses have thought about the objectives, but it's not clear to the uh, line managers in that space. Multiple programs running inside the uh, company which not, with not a single like a comprehensive policy around this. So there are various reasons for this. And it has... And there's a need for overhauling the recognition programs. Okay? And when I say overhauling means using the digital technology which is available, how it can be helpful. Please understand that if I had the option today to recognize each one of my employees individually on a, at a, at a, like a very personal level, nothing better than that. Okay? But I can't. Okay? By the way, I am based in Delhi. But my whole team is based out of Guwahati, Assam. Okay, so we are about 180 people there. We are servicing clients across the globe from there. I, I wanted to mention that because I'm pretty proud of the fact that we have set up the whole technology company from a small place. So I can't, I can't recognize them individually there. So what's the next best solution? I move on to a digital solution, digital platform there. So it has to be a balance which everyone has to think about it. But a digital solution is something which I required. Now. While I'm talking about what are those things which different products and technologies and tools help you, what are the things, how they help you in the recognition program, I'm talking more from our product point of view. But please understand that there are other products in the market and each of them has their pros and the cons and you need to evaluate. I'm talking about our tool because that's what I know about here. Designing the program, that's the first step of it. Now, Till about two years back or two and a half years back, I didn't see this problem too much there. But last two years, there's been a huge demand in uh, people coming to us and saying that, hey, we want a digital recognition tool. Suddenly, like everyone's moving digital after the COVID thing, right? So uh, we want this recognition tool, but we don't know where to get started from. Okay? You want to do a comp and benefit study, you have enough expertise in the company. Or you can go to a AON, a Mercer or someone to give you this. You want to design a recognition program? You search around the net, there's not too many frameworks out there to help you in designing the program. There's not too much expertise out there. Okay, there are lots of players in this space, but they have not given this frameworks. So we, we created this something called the AIR framework, which I will touch upon in the next uh, slide, making it easy to adopt and use. Okay, now this is very, very important. I mean, think about it. Government has been trying to move the digital currency, digital, I mean, moving away from cash and everything. And how difficult, it was always there. You could always do a bank transfer, right? But after the UPI thing, it becomes so easy. The importance of the ease of use and adoption has to be very, very, is something which you should be ingrained, okay? I remember 10 years, 12 years back when I had to fill my timesheets, I had to fill up those timesheets uh, at work, right? It's a cumbersome jo job and I just have to go there, again, fill this up kind of thing. Uh, today, people are used to an Amazon, Flipkart, Instagram kind of an experience. They need the consumer class experience. Okay, If it's not going to be there, no adoption is going to happen. It has to be in the flow of the work. Okay, In the sense that I don't want to go to some other platform, other tool, log in there, forget my password there, and, and to use it. It has to be in the flow of the work. 
Maybe you're using Microsoft Teams at Office. Maybe you're using Outlook. Maybe you're using Slack. Okay, it has to be the flow of the work there. Everything has to happen from within those tools there. And multi-channel approach, website, uh, mobile, WhatsApp, SMS, all those things also need to come into play. Okay, And easily measure and tweak. This is very, very important. You have a great design. You have got a great plan. But as the great Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan till they get punched. Right? So you will get punched. It is not going to work as per what you designed the program to be. And that's where those whole analytics, insights in these things are very, very important. And that's how we have built up. I'll quickly run through this. This is something which I just want to spend a minute on this before I quickly browse through the uh, other slides. The whole framework I was talking about, the design. Okay, So we came up with this framework called the AIR framework. And uh, the guy, our marketing guys did a lovely job. During the COVID times, that's what they said, the air that you need to breathe. So it's about appreciation, incentivization, reinforcement with an emotional connect. It's just a framework for you to think about the different factors. It's not a recipe where I'm saying that this is the program, this is how you should design your program, this is how you should implement your program. It's just a framework. Basically, appreciation is recognizing a person's inherent value. What factors do you need to consider there? How much should be the coverage? What should be the frequency of your recognition? You need to think about that. Incentivization, okay? That it should be very clear for anyone who's recognizing that, that what do they need to do to get recognized on the platform, okay? And what is the excitement or the impetus for employees to get recognized? And now you give me some random award from some small uh, uh, organization, I don't care, right? Now, you give me a, suddenly a, a People Matters Award, I am excited about it. So you need to create that kind of feeling that this program, rec being recognized in this program is something which should excite you. Okay, Reinforcement, basically, which are the specific behaviors which you want to drive in your employees? And how is it aligned to the company values? And of course, the last is the emotional connect. We say it with a superscript because that's a multiplier. Okay, How personalized it is how you deliver these things. So these are becoming very, very important tools. And that's where our framework helps you in thinking about the different factors, not in totally designing the program, but that's there. And uh, that's the, so the designing part, the easy adoption, so these I'll just browse through and I'm happy to go give you a demo whenever you want it. So we have all these recognition tools inside there. Just the Amazon store thing, which I want to talk about. So ease, ease of uh, delivering uh, products or merchandise kind of. So we have integrated, we have only top two or three, not top, as like only two or three players in the world who have integrated with Amazon, where we give this entire, Amazon takes care of our logistics there and, and the entire rewarding happens through our platform there. We have the merchandise, the experiences, uh, service yearbooks, all those things. I'll not go through it. All the integrations are there. This is important. I talked about the flow of the work. So we are integrated with all these tools where you can do the entire recognition within the flow of the work there. And the last part, so designing, easy to adopt and use, and measure and tweak. So we have something called an AIR index, which tells you how your program was, from an execution point of view, how successful was it there. And we have the manager insights. This is very important because HR or the HR admin has all the reports anyway, but the adoption is going to happen from the line managers, right? So if you give them the insights, who are the people who are recognized there, okay? Uh, how are they being recognized? How does it compare with the company levels, uh, company standards? Okay, all these will give insights to them. So recognition is important. Uh, the tools are there to help you with this recognition. You need to design, make it easy to adopt, and quickly keep on tweaking it. So I'll leave uh, the recognition at that part because you know uh, I have okay, seven minutes there. So uh, on the wellness side of things, okay. Now, everyone keeps on talking about wellness. I think in the last two years, again, it has picked up really, really strongly there. But what exactly, if I, when I've spoken to many uh, HR or even employees, I'm not getting a clear picture of what exactly in the wellness stuff there, which needs to be done there. So again, I'll, I'll quote from Gartner. So Gartner, uh, one study said that if employees are well, then they score high on engagement, on retention, all these things. So there's significant impact of employee being well. And the second graph basically says that if employees participate in the wellness programs, they are well. Okay. So wellness has an impact on business parameters. And if they participate in these wellness programs, 
it increases their wellness. So the solution is very simple, right? Just get employees to participate in the wellness programs. I think that would be the biggest challenge for anyone. I mean, uh, any HR, how do we get them to uh, engage on the wellness programs there? So, I mean, this is what we have seen, okay? I'm pretty sure some other thoughts are there, uh, other insights are there from others. From our point of view, we found the offerings very fragmented there in the market, okay? There's a mental wellness player, there's a physical wellness, there's a doctor consultation uh, provider. So all this creates different experiences for the employee. And you want a single, you know, single sort of experience through the entire wellness journey. Okay? This fragmented offerings which are there is, is a problem, okay? Lack of habit formation. You know, wellness is a creature of habit. You know, how do we get this? You can't just have one uh, yoga session and expect people to be interested in yoga. Okay, so you need to get that habit formation onto this thing. So, which was which is lacking in today's most of the corporate wellness programs which we have seen. The power of community again. This is again common sensical here. You know, in wellness programs, whoever does some wellness activities would know that. Uh, if you have a community, a group of people who is participating, then you don't want to miss the morning run. Uh, so, so that community is there. And who's the biggest community outside of your, you know, maybe outside of family, or I would say, is the corporate colleagues which you have. It has been under leverage. If you can get the community there from the corporate community, this can have a significant impact which is there. And of course, lack of insights and usage. Because my VP said that uh, we should have uh, a mental wellness. We did this mental wellness uh, thing because someone said some other, you know, uh, a very vocal employee said something about uh, physical, uh, let's say, yoga session, you got it done. But what's it that is being adopted? Okay, which are the programs which are actually seeing interest? And that will be very, I think one of the panel discussions, the morning panel discussion said, what the company decides what they want and what the employees want, there's a huge gap. Okay, if you don't have the insight, then you can't take a decision about that. So we are solving for this. I don't want to, again, I'll put the caveat here, other tools which are there, uh, which does this. But from our platform point of view, we are put, putting one platform to take care of all these fragmented offerings. And, and we are doing this not by our own expertise. Please be very clear that no wellness provider has domain expertise across all segments. Someone will have financial wellness, someone will have mental wellness, but no one has the possibility of giving you the entire expertise. So we have, we are, we have worked with different partners where we have curated this list of partners where we integrate them onto this platform there. Incentivizing through the, I talked about the incentivizing part, we have a wellness wallet through which you incentivize the habit formation, the companies can, uh, the HR can create those challenges there, incentivize people. We just recently concluded the Global Walkathon Challenge. So it, it was across 35 countries uh, over a period of about 15, 20 days. We had 280 million steps being taken across the globe, about 30% of in India, about 20% in the US, and the rest across spread across the different uh, worlds. So there was a huge incentive which was there, motivating. Incentive may not be all monetary. It can also be the recognition of uh, being the best team. All those kinds of things are there. Uh, the community thing is also there where we have built up on the platform where you can see the feed of what is happening there. Uh, all those things can be built up. I'll not go through this again for lack of time. Uh, ultimately, in our platform, we have three frameworks. Okay, There's the enterprise framework where we have this whole feed. What is happening by, uh, I mean, people are sharing their wellness activities there, chat rooms are there. It is on Microsoft Teams also, by the way. So within Microsoft Teams only, you will be able to use the entire wellness platform, a lot of content and a lot of this partner network, which is being integrated onto the platform. By the way, we also work with, it's not just our partners. You will be happy with many of your existing partners. We integrate them also onto the platform there. There's a personal wellness framework. Okay, HR can do only so much in the wellness side. Okay, it has to be a personal approach. Now, we give the tools where the employees can do the whole wellness on their own also. HR will nudge them to a certain activity, but beyond that, it will be the individual. Now, what does the individual do if, if the HR is not organizing any events, any wellness activities, right? So this framework allows you to uh, employ to carry on with their wellness activities on their own beyond the corporate initiatives. And the habit formation thing is also being built into the system through the wallets and, and allowances which is spent through this uh, uh, platform. 
So, uh, and uh, the analytics and insight, we have this entire dashboard, leaderboards, all those things have been built into this system there. Now, uh, this, while we built up all these things, that only the last point I want to stress upon, you know, we, we keep on getting asked what's the wellness, uh, what is the ROI, okay, on the wellness spend, which is there are too costly, no adoption, ours is a free platform on the wellness side. We take on usage. Usage means if the company wants to do some activity on this, then only. If the individual wants to use, take that. If the individual wants to pay, that's all there. So I'll leave it at, at that point. Uh, you know. So what I talked about is the whole engagement is a component of various factors there. Okay, And there are expertise around those space. But the tools part on the recognition and wellness is something which can give you a lot of benefit and I would say it's a low-hanging fruit. And tools like ourselves, I mean, uh, there are other tools out there. I'm pretty sure there are like five, six vendors out there who has all these kind of you know, features and facilities to help you engage your employees, right? So I'll leave you at that. Happy to chat outside, okay? Thank you.